some will leave it another minute and then I'll start the recording and introduce you, Mr. Money, and if we can get into it, it'll be great. Glenn, can you get me unlocked, please, so I can drop material as she's talking? Get your handle and then I'll pass it on to the admin. And then you can post in the uh, Thank you. chat. Is ahead of me. Am I ahead of you? Yeah, I do. I do like being prepared. Then this project <laughs> is it's a little different. You know that kind of caught me off guard and had to mm. ramp up really quickly. But I do like being prepared. Oh yeah, the NFTs look awesome. Really nice artwork, yeah. and it's so popular in Asia. You know, it's uh, huge. So we can go into. How you could maybe market out there into Asia as well. It could really blow up in Japan and other places. Yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was definitely the original concept to really take our time with it. The artwork was halfway done with the layers, what we wanted, the storyline, how it was going to develop. And um, another project um, caught on to some of our earlier work. I mean, everything down to it. So um, we kind of had to rush to put it out there because as NFTs, ownership is only ownership if you meant it first. Um, so we kind of really safeguard the character, um, the ones we started with, which is the base model that you see, the cute little happy ones, um, they were never meant to be the final character. They were never meant to be um, part of the narrative. Um, and because that other project um, got a hold of, of one of the, the discarded copies, we just included them and thought this is a good basis um, to show the evolution. Um, but that's what we started out with, Crafted by Hand. Those those characters, you'll see some of them, the fingers are not quite closed. Um, but we we incorporated it just to show ownership, right? We started this project. Um, we crafted these characters from, from hand based on the animation, and then we evolved them. And they still have quite a bit of evolving to go. Um, but this is the ones that we're prepared to share. Right. I think uh, if everyone's here, we're ready to start. I'll start the recording. Quite unlocked yet. Okay, good evening, Wellcoin Talk community. Tonight we have an AMA with Chibu Inu. Um, here to speak about that is Mistress Money. Um, she's an early community member here at Wellcoin Talk, so it's always exciting when the uh, community members come with projects and they've been around a long time and watched us grow over the years. Um, so for investors that don't know Mistress Money, maybe we could just uh, have a bit of your background in crypto, Mistress Money, that'd be great. Sure. Um, really got into crypto um, a little bit at a time, dipped a toe in 2017, but my son is an avid gamer from since 2014. Um, kept bugging me about Bitcoin and buying this stuff. He wanted to buy a miner at that point. And had I listened, I'll probably be a millionaire now, but I didn't. <laughs> um, and started really following along in 2017. Um, been on a few projects that, that have done really, really well. Um, and then um, decided to, to get into a project of my own. Um, and so I resigned my full-time job. At that time, I was working for Apple as a Smead. Um, and been full into crypto ever since daily. Um, I was joked that crypto doesn't sleep, so neither do I. Um, so that's been going on a year now. Um, really, really excited. Um, Chiba Inu, it's one word. Um, and it's Japanese-inspired anime. Um, they actually have kind of like a, a fixation with little people, dwarfism. Um, and we decided to go a different route. Um, some of the characters are highly sexualized. Um, and some are just treated like pets. Um, but we wanted to um, take that character. Um, we wanted to have a strong female lead. I think the market, I think the world is ready for this tiny badass, right? Um, you know, I love, I was very much a tomboy. Uh, I was pitching marbles. I don't know if you know what that is, <laughs> right? In, 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 you know, in the garden with my brothers. I, I always wanted to steal their stuff. I wanted to jump in puddles. You know, I wasn't never very girly. Um, and I read their comic books and and, and I'm a huge sci-fi fan. Um, and one of the things that you find growing up as a female was always that the character 
of another woman was or, or girl was either highly sexualized or she was just a really mean person. Um, and I really uh, was looking forward to seeing someone that I can identify with, that that girls reading this or or people reading this can identify with. Um, my my youngest is five foot, and boy, she acts like she's ten feet tall. Um, so this image of character, um, being able to take on some really big eyes and and come out the winner, really excited to tell that story. Um, it is a story of empowerment. It's about hope. Um, and it kind of seems with all the dark stuff going on in the world, um, it's kind of right for it, right? Like I, I am always a glass half full person, never glass half empty. And that's the, the viewpoint that we, we sat down, went to paper with for the ideology of this, um, put our own spin on it and sat down with the, the writer and, and literally said, hey, this is, this is where I see this character going. And it was cosmic. What she has put on paper, I think you guys are already uh, uh, getting a glimpse of it in the chat, um, was just personifying everything uh, about the character that I wanted. Um, and then my artists, now we may not keep this, uh, I'm going to tell you guys right now, we may not keep this character as the heroine, but this is one of our female characters um, in in the whole MNFT, uh, I'm sorry, NFT collection. Um but yeah, that it, she may not necessarily be the heroine. We might change that up a little bit. Um, but so you're getting a sneak peek. Um, the NFT collection should be ready to mint in about three weeks uh, because we want to have a full mark. Um, obviously, because they evolve, it's 3,000 of them, of which 1,500 are going to be eligible to breed. That's what adds the lineage to the character, right? So you're giving them that history. Um, she understands what happens to her, her parents, how she came to be. Um, and from that 3,000, 1,500 other rares. So you're going to pair them up, male and female, to breed, give life to a new NFT. Um, and that NFT, that evolved NFT, will be full 3D, 4D. Um, that will only be 750. Those holders will be able to vote on the storyline, kind of like choose your own adventure. Of course, there will be unlockable content. They all have utility to them, both the regular NFTs, the rare NFTs, and the ultra um, all of them have utilities added to them, little secret things attached to them as we lay out and, and move forward. Um, we have a really quite comprehensive roadmap and um, white paper that tells you how we're going to do this. Um, and so the Mart itself, we didn't want to add it later on. It's the reason why we decided to launch and put the Mart later um, was because we wanted it all on one. So we want you to be able to not only mint it and obviously because um there's the tradable factor to it, right? Because remember, only 1,500 are eligible to breed. So if you have four uh, males that are, are the rares um, and you need a female, you've got to be able to trade it. Um, so it will have the mint, trade, and sell option right there, same day, day one. Um, so that's why we put that out to make sure we had all of the text worked out on that. Um, the art is looking really great, really excited to see how all of it compiles. Um, so, yeah. I kind of rambled there, didn't I? Awesome, and fifty percent are going to be rare, so that that's a really good chance. Like, if you mint two, that you you've got a good chance of getting one that's rare. And um, yeah, that's really exciting for the investors. What what's going to be the price for the NFTs, and what will you do with the profits uh, from the series? The original um, three thousand are going to mint for point one B and B. Um, there's thirty percent from the mint that goes directly back into the marketing wallet for the token. In addition to that, there's 7%, I think, for innovation. Um, so, you know, things are constantly changing. This is the blockchain. This is what I love about this space. Um, you know, you wake up and then all of a sudden things have changed, there's something new. And things are happening really hard and fast when it comes to NFTs in this space. So we wanna make sure that we have the funds to make sure that we evolve with it, right? Um, that's the exciting part. Um, you know. People want two things in this space. They want things that they can enjoy um, and they want things that can make them money. Um, and I think we kind of hit the nail on the head with this one. Our pre-sale is live. I hated the fact that we didn't have an opportunity to do the marketing properly, but that other project was so hot on our ass. Um, you know, we're getting our art and, and it's not something that I've had an experience with before. Um, and it's an NFT, so it's usually... When you talk about ownership, 
It only belongs to the person that meant it first. And because our art was already out there being duplicated, um, I was like, hey, um, let's just go to market. It's a 2040. Um, and we launched from there. Uh, we had a private sale of only 10 BNB. Um, and that filled. Uh, and now we're just waiting for the public sale to fill. Um, and then we launched tomorrow, 22222. Someone pinched your idea, and that's terrible. It happens a lot in on the BSC, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, so you, you're going to be able to launch first, and then get the NFTs out before they try and copy it. Then, yeah, yeah, because you know it, it's an NFT, right? So how do you how do you how do you prove ownership? <laughs> it's on the blockchain, right? That's exactly what a non fungible token does. It proves ownership, um, and so that's the reason why I did have you notice that all our art now has that watermark on it. Um, but it's it's really very clean, very good art, um, and really excited um, for the progression of not only the graphic novel, right? Because it's, it's coming with this story. It's coming with this utility. Um, from day one, we're going to have staking available. I did put 72 hours out on our our assets only because I like to make sure things are safe. Um, the contract has been tested twice before. Uh, my contract dev is, is in the chat as well um, and proven to work very well. Um, so every step of the way, while we kind of negated on the on the proper marketing, that's what you really needed like beforehand. Well, everything else was just leading up to us being okay. Everything is tested. Everything's good. We're good to go. Let's start marketing. Um, we got to the point where everything was good. We have to launch now. Right. Um, we didn't really get a chance to market the way I wanted it to. Um, but I think the concept, um, the artwork, the project, um, you know, me being behind it, my team being 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 behind it. I'm pretty confident that we could hit that soft cap. Yeah. What, what's the soft cap and hard cap? And um, is it a fair launch you're doing? Yeah. Yeah. It's this. it's a 2040. So it's a 20 soft cap, 40 hard cap um, on token fuel. Um, it is DGEM's um, self-service launch pad. Um, we're actually the first project on there. Um, it was really easy to use. I can have my dev talk a little bit more about that. But it was really easy to use. I liked it. They have a great community. Um, you know, I'm active in, in, in DGEM community myself. So I was really glad that they had a, a, a launch pad like that. That was really easy to use. Took us a couple of minutes and, and bam. Um, you know, you, you hear so much about these different launch pads. And the difficulty, and I had one project that failed three times using Dex tools. Um, you, you know, you, you just, it, it's not where you want to go. And this worked out really, really nice. It was so easy to get on there um, and, and do everything, um, which is a relief, which is a relief. So you know that not only the project is going to be able to move forward the way it needs to, but 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 really investors' money are safe, right? Um, that's a big thing. So security was well. Um, I know one of the persons responsible for the security on, on there um, and was just really happy to, to do that partnership with them and be the first on that launch pad. And let's go back to the NFT breeding. How will that work for investors um, through the minting? Yeah. So they, they pair up. So um, assuming I, and I put, I, I estimated on the roadmap that we expect it maybe three months for the 3000 to sell out. Um, but they're really quite popular. I had quite a few people say that they can't wait to mint them. Um, so, you know, it, they might sell out before then, but I put three months on the roadmap and then it's going to be a fusion. So you're going to turn in your rare male, your rare female. Um, we're going to burn them and then you're going to be issued the mint pass to get one of the 750. Um, and that mint pass is going to be 0.3 BNB. Um, the 3D, 4D version um, I wish I could show you an example. Um, it, it, it's, it's super, super awesome, super clean. Um, and as NFT evolves where it can interact with an app, it can interact with frames in your home. Um, it's pretty dope. That's the best word I can find, right? Pretty dope, um, to see it. And that's where we're heading with that. That's the reason for the difference in the pricing. And um, how will it work with staking if you've got an ultra rare where you get maybe higher rewards from that? So there are several ways to be rewarded by being a holder, right? So you've got the regular NFTs. Are they worthless? No, they're not. Um, we've got some hidden surprises 
for the regular NFTs. Um, we have the staking platform for the token. That's already a confirmed deal. Um, and we'll be able, uh, will be available 72 hours, um, after launch sooner, but I say 72 hours. Um, and then the NFT staking and the regular NFTs will give you a slight advantage in terms of the API, um, for staking, um, the rare NFTs, um, as they come about, they give you more options in terms of the storyline voting. Um, in addition to that, um, they have some secret utilities to them as well. So we, 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 we planned it to, to be intriguing and rewarding to holding and minting those NFTs. So yeah, maybe we can go into the Amara City, which is the original graphics novel series you're creating. The, the, the first book is that already planned out, but then like you say, from book two, uh, investors will be able to um, vote on what, what how the storyline progresses. Correct, because you've got to remember um, Rhea Kami, um, this is her story we're telling in book one, right? That's the introduction that we dropped in chat. That's her story you're telling. And the final 750, which are the ultra rares, that's 750 characters that you can draw from um, in terms of wanting to tell a story. Um, so yours can definitely be one that can be in the story. Now, remember, there are several ways that you can do with a graphic novel, but it's not just a graphic novel. It's an NFT graphic novel. It's a zine. Um, and because of that, um, there is also a mint for that as well. So you as a regular NFT holder, um, you get a copy of that um, and you get the regular copy. And then as you go, as you progress, the, the display of it becomes more complicated, um, you know, in terms of how it interacts with you. Um, so it's really exciting to, to grasp some of this new technology and play around with it and apply it um, on your project, right? Like like the tech that we have, the team that I have with the tech, um, that's what they live for. They literally live to make cool shit, right? That's their motto. They live to make cool shit. And what's cooler than, than evolving an NFT? In, like, in book two, maybe as well, you can have competitions for people that minted the rare and ultra rare to be in, inside uh, that series, yeah. Are you in my team chat, Len? Are you in my team chat? Creative. <laughs> <laughs> Are you in my team chat? Are you the spy we've been looking for? It's literally what the author was talking about yesterday. She was like, yeah, I'm thinking about um, how this competition could go, um, you know, and how they can battle it out. Um, my contract dev, even talked about um, doing a game for it because he absolutely fell in love with the characters. Um, so yeah, I just want to know, are you in my team chat? And I have to go back and look and see if you're in there. So it's definitely on the table. <clears throat> but I'm wondering, yeah, with the uh, the graphic novels, if you're looking at doing like uh, bookstores, Kindle copies and Amazon audio books in the future. That's the exciting part, right? That's the really super exciting part. Um, the way that it is structured, the way it comes about and how we mint them, those are absolute opportunities and pathways that we can pursue. Um, that's what makes this whole project so exciting. Um, you know, I really wish we had the opportunity to market it properly. Um, anybody looking at it from the outside with the, the little city pictures that we have of them when they were younger, when we were crafting the images might think, oh, this is not a serious project. Um, and we obviously did not want to put all of our ideas out there in the white paper or the roadmap, but but in understanding the project as we lay it out now, the possibilities for this is endless. Um, one of the things that I really want to look forward to as well, um, and we made sure in the contract was doing a V2, maybe going to a different blockchain. Um, BSC just seems to be having a lot of issues. Um, and so we want to have to make sure built into the tech, not only just with the mark, but also on the blockchain as well, that we won't have any issues should that be a route that we decided to go, as long as it always benefits the investor, right? Um, I've seen some projects do it. Um, I bought Punks Evolved um, and they went from Ether to Soul. Um, and I like that transition. They actually refunded the gas fees um, to holders I got in like really early, I think I had maybe mint number 351 or something like that. Um, and so that shows a project that really cared about the people that bought 
their their art, right? Um, and how that's going to evolve. So there are so many possibilities and so many NFT projects that I've seen gone from where they originally minted um, and, and went over to a different blockchain and their core following doubled, right? Who they bought over from one blockchain to another actually doubled because of it. So it's really exciting to see where we can take this project. Investors that don't know Mistress Money, I've known Mistress Money for a long time and she's very passionate about crypto and her projects and she puts 110% in and uh, her heart and soul into everything. So, um, yeah, I know it's a serious project, but like you say, because of how, how it works with um, uh, these rivals that are trying to steal your ideas, unfortunately, yeah, um, but I'm sure it's going to be a huge success. Um, so going on to the tokenomics for investors, how does it work on the buys and sell? It's a nice low tax, which is good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things that I really went back and um, we, we revamped, talked about. Um, you know, I really wanted to make sure that when it came to the tokenomics, that it was benefit to pushing the project forward, but also affordable, right? Because, you know, I don't think people really get understand. I have always said, you want to support me, you want to support my projects, you want to support my team. Um, you sell at the all-time high. You buy the dip and you dollar cost average. Um, I will never be a person telling you, let's diamond hand. Typically, the person that says let's diamond hand is busy dumping their bag, right? This is a business. This is an investment. And if you want to support me, then use your business sense for it. So you need to calculate what is it going to cost this investor to buy into your project? right? Are you going to make it so expensive for them to buy in? And are you going to make it so expensive for them to sell? Um, it's a problem to keep them coming back. So while we didn't do need the taxes to keep the project going, we wanted to have it at, at a rate that was acceptable um, because we do have funds coming in from the mint as well. So that supplements the token, right? Um, and that's the reason why we went with a straight 7% buy on the tax, 7% on the sell for a total of 14. <clears throat> and yeah, what's the core team size you're building there at um, Chibinu? Um, so I've got my 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 two artists who are, are exceptional. Um, and then Queen is an artist herself. Um, she's a photographer. She runs several businesses in real life. I um, run her own business and quite successful at that. Um, and so the three of them getting together puts out really, really phenomenal art. Um, and then we've got our security guy. Um, he's hidden somewhere in the background. Um, he's in Australia, so the hour, the time, the time difference might be an issue for him. And then we've got our, our financial advisor, um, Jeff. Uh, so where are we at? I think we're about maybe eight or nine on the team. Um, and we definitely have room to grow. Um, our contract dev was really great, Rudy. Um, came in and he said, okay, so this is what you can have if you were looking for your team to grow. Um, I think we had 3% left over and I put it for community prizes. Um, but if we needed to add to the team, we actually can draw from that pool um, to bring them on to core team, right? Of course, our tokens are locked for a period of time. Um, you know, safeguarding the investors as always, that's just the way to, to do it. People are trusting us with their money. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I wanted to dox. Um, we didn't do a whole lot of marketing before, and it's like kind of a crapshoot. This person is coming and asking me for money. I don't know who you are. Um, I haven't seen any marketing from you. I haven't really seen much from you, and um, I had planned on on doing this anyway because this is actually just the tip of the iceberg for this project. It has a home in a much larger project, um, so I'm really excited to see how all of it ties together. Um, it's not going anywhere. It's definitely not going anywhere. And have you got an audit plan before launch or after launch in next week or so? I'm sorry? Um, before launch or after launch in the next week or so? What to do? Do marketing? I didn't hear the first part of the question. That's why. Audits. I, I, I like a, a certain oh, audit. audit yeah. on track. Yeah. You know, I, here, here's the thing, right? Um, when it comes to getting audits done, and maybe this is my bias, um, I test con. I test my contract. I would. I would run one or two, three, four, um, other projects to make sure my contract is working um, for the one I really need it for. Testnet only takes you so far. Um, that's my personal opinion. Um, 
And when it comes to audits, I I was involved with that really big project last year. Um, that was a total rug that was endorsed by Unicrip, which was supposed to be anti-rug. Um, it's impossible if you're you you know you're on Unicrip, you can't get rug. Um, and I was rug for six beans, right? Um, and they had all three freaking audits, all three audits. Those audits cost you nine twelve k. Um, they had all three audits when, and I still got rugged. <laughs> right? I still yeah, got rugged. There's, no, there's no guarantees, and <laughs> yeah. yeah, audits are very expensive. You could spend the money better elsewhere on marketing or something else, definitely. Um, and yeah, so after the launch, what are you planning on the marketing side? Oh, everything. Um, I am quite comfortable going on a, a marketing media blitz um, because we didn't get a chance to really do much before. We do have another AMA lined up for tonight and then the launch tomorrow. Um, but yeah, um, and that's why we chucked 80% straight into liquidity. I wanted a solid liquidity as much as we can get, um, you know, for that buy sell. I'm all, I'm all good with that. Um, but yeah, complete all of it straight into marketing um, because we really didn't have an opportunity to do too much beforehand. So yeah, um, everything lined up, everything we can get our hands up on is where you're going to see us. You're probably going to get tired of seeing us. And with the graphic novel, how many pages are you looking at doing there on that? That's really up to scratch. We're looking to drop technically a chapter every month. Um, so it's not like, so So I guess the best way to put it is like this. Um, so we're going to have the, the, the day of mint, right? Um, which is about in three weeks. So you go mint. All right, so now I'm going to just sit and wait. No, this is, this is actively driving that storyline. We're dropping those chapters every single month. And when the all chapters are completed and the and, and her book, Amorous City Book One, is completed, that goes in a mint on its own, for which both the regular holders, the ultra rare holders, and the rare well won't be any rare, right? Because we go from the 3000 to the 1500 and from the 1500 to the 750. So you're gonna have the ultra rare and you're gonna have your regular holders that are going to be able to get those mints for free, right? Um, we're gonna put out a different version of it that people can buy, um, but those that hold the NFTs, those are the ones that are gonna be able to get the book for free. So we're gonna be putting out the chapter. Um, we might include some artwork to it, um, but just so people can get an idea of where the storyline is going. And once the book is completed, that's theirs. That's that's part of the benefit of being a holder of the NFT. They get that. And I think we've talked about maybe putting a percentage back um, into their pockets for being a holder of that NFT from the mints on the books itself, right? On, on the zine. So it's built in to keep rewarding. We weren't kidding. It's built in to keep rewarding people for holding this NFT. Ray, Cammy, how many of them will be minted in the NFTs? And will you have other, other characters in the uh, graphic novel as well? That's the thing. So we've got 750 characters that are the ultra rares that we can definitely pull from. Um, and this is what's make it so much more exciting um, when you talk about kind of choose your own adventure, right? Um, as a holder of the ultra rare, you get to guide that storyline as well. So if we introduce one of the characters that you really like, and if you happen to own that character, of course that value goes up for you, right? Remember, um, Rekami, she is one of a kind. Um, that's why I said, don't, don't get too attached to the female image we drop because that might not be her. Um, you'll find out who she is on, on, on Monday um, and what she looks like completely. But uh, yeah, that's some of the artwork that's going to be included in the mint. Awesome. And I can open it up to the rest of the team if anyone's got a question for Mistress Money over at Chibinu. Hey, Glenn. Yeah, I was listening in and I know like a lot of members of our community are uh, familiar with Mistress Money and her passion and it really shows. And um, yeah, it looks like you're building something really cool with the, with the arc and the graphic novels. And it, it's like you said, like the, the expansion of this can 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 be in like a, a lot of directions, right? Whether you go to stores with physical copies, whether you add in all the characters. So it looks 
it looks super nice so uh well i do have sort of like i don't know if it's silly or whatnot but maybe you can you can share for 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 the new members here and for our community uh what are some some learning lessons that that you've took from from your past endeavors or maybe like the top one or two that that you're really <laughs> holding on like strongly that you, that you know that will will push this in the right direction um never fair launch how about that <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. I I would I would tell you that um I on on, on a, a previous project that I had I ignored everyone I said listen how can you ask for people to invest their money if you're not willing to invest yourself so I came out with a, with thousands of dollars worth of a platform um and then was where was the marketing right? Because I spent everything on, on giving a finished product um, and fine tuning it. Where was the marketing? Um, and so that's definitely a lesson to be considered when you're talking about a project with utility. Um, it definitely does need a community to support it. It does need those those funds. And if you have it, great. But marketing in the space is very expensive. Um, and so you've got to have a pool to draw from to sustain that project. Um, I've seen it time and time again. There are projects with so much utility, um, so much to give and new and evolving and innovative ideas. Um, but we just don't seem to have the investor that wants to buy in and hold anymore. That works a little differently for NFTs, right? Um, with NFTs, the people are either attracted to the art or they're attracted to the investment possibility that it could be. Um, this is definitely one of the first for, I believe, BSC. Um, and I do have a thing about doing, doing things first, right? Um, because I'm always after um, what's next. It's, it's one of the reasons why we talk about um, evolution is inevitable. If we are not evolving in this space, if we are not learning and adapting from our mistakes, if we're not confronting those things that, that makes us grow as a person, then this is not the place for you as a project owner. Um, definitely, I hate it. Oh my God, I hate it having to bring this now. Uh, I will tell you passionately. And some people might be turned off by that. That's okay. That's absolutely okay. Um, I love being prepared. I love having uh, a concrete A, B, C, D and following that line, right? It just makes sense to my brain. And so having to, to push this out now without the amount of marketing that we wanted to do beforehand, um, it, it kind of, it triggers my OCD. Uh, my eye keep twitching from it. Um, so yeah, rushing a project is definitely something that you don't want to do. Um, I'm pretty stubborn about that. If the artwork, the concept, the writing, if those things that are the basic foundation for this project was not already done, um, I wouldn't be here. I'd have been like, okay, then we go back and we revamp what the images look like. I don't care how many times we would have to do it over. Um, I don't care what they got a hold of. It's still going to be ours. This is how we're going to revamp it. We're going to relook. Maybe we find a different character in the story to write about. Let them have that. Um, you know, if none of those things were done, I definitely wouldn't be here. All of those things are done. All of those things are done. Um, but I do not like the fact that we didn't have time to market it. So I would say rushing a project is a no-no. I don't like it. I don't think it bodes well. I don't think it it showcases the, 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 the real ability of a project. So I'll take the onus for that. Um, I just wanted to make sure we were the first out. Yeah, that, that's I'd like a... to expand on that too. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Queen. So one of the real reasons is in the artistic part of this development, we went through a lot of research to make sure that we were using real things, real we just wanted to stay true to the character and what it looked like, how it acted. There's there's rules in in the culture yeah. of the Japanese on how that happens. Another yeah. big thing on the Japanese side is numbers. Two 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 two, which is the date of tomorrow at launch, symbolizes the number ten or the number one in the numerology, and that is new beginnings to the Japanese cultures, and that is very important. We make sure we stay on that launch date and stay true to the culture that we're representing. That was definitely a, a big part of it. 
Um, yeah, I, I, I like I like I like what I'm hearing a lot because it, it's well you're you're abiding by one of my golden rules, which is always have a plan, right? And so when you talk about being prepared and having everything ready, uh, it looks like yeah you've already built a team around you, and uh, I, I like the direction that uh, yeah you can definitely take this in. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, it's super cool. Right, and yeah, I was wondering, Mr. Shmoney, so you were maybe planning on a, a game as well for Chibinu in the future, where people could interact with their uh, NFTs. That'd be great. Um, yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a, a Rudy come up and talk about that because it was his idea, <laughs> right? He was like, "Oh, this would be great as a game." Nope, I am still knee deep in the art, and I'm still knee deep in the story. So if you want a game. You gotta got you gotta get him to get up and talk about it, man. Let him let him put it forth publicly. Like, where's the game? When they ask, where's the game? I'm gonna say, Rudy, you got something you wanna say, buddy? Uh, I wasn't planning on it, but I, I I can talk, you know, I ain't worried about <laughs> it. But no, it's um the these kind of characters and stuff like this that are deep rooted in like Japanese culture and anime and stuff like that. Um definitely very into um I want to say cosplay and role playing and stuff like that. Like they love getting into those uh, certain types of characters. Right. Um, so my daughter has a bunch of games on her phone and on her iPad where you take characters that are similar to this and you just go inside of a, a little world, like a little chat room kind of, and you have these avatars and you walk around and you talk to people, you customize them, you accessorize them. Right. Um, so something like that would definitely not be that hard to implement with with a project like this and i i, I would think that would be uh, a good place to start right and then a good foundation like that just having a little chat room a little baby play to earn you can take them on little quests and then you just build off of that you know um but that was just kind of like my vision that's as soon as i seen these characters that's what i thought of because my daughter is definitely all into games like this you know um whether or not that actually happens, I don't know because I don't like to overpromise and underdeliver. But that's obviously yeah. in the imagination phase right now. That's just what's spinning around in my head. So that's all I got to say on that. Yeah, but we do have. Yeah, that... we, do have um, we do have that seven percent of the marketing, um, the mint itself, dedicated to innovation. Um, and and if that's something that that Rudy had the time for for us to really pursue, and and we're past the first mint. Um, and it's received well, and the first chapter drops and it's received well, uh, certainly um, we'll have the funds to start pursuing something like that. We were really careful on how we allocated everything. Um, and that was the important part. Um, you got to remember that the tokenomics um, on itself is going to give you the option to earn through reflection, um, through staking. The NFT itself is going to give you the same opportunity as well, but they interact with each other where the Mint will be able to support itself through its own um, marketing, as well as adding marketing funds to the token as well. At some point, I'd like to integrate um, being able to do the Mint with the token, but you remember that's a spend, right? So that's a red on your chart. Um, and until, you know, uh, we've gotten to the point that we've solved that issue. And Glenn, you and I have talked about that last night, um, where that that buy is actually green on your chart and not a sell. Um, it's just going to be in BNB for now. But that that's where I'd like to see the token. Um, frankly, that's my vision for it. Yeah, definitely, Mr. Mrs. Money. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and Rudy, yeah, that's how I envisioned it, like a social media app where people could interact because anime is so huge, um, especially in Asia, that, yeah, you could just sort of talk and dress up and, yeah, yeah, it'd be a really cool iOS or Android app um, for Chibunu in the future. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, we've got some questions from investors, so I'll move over to there. Um, sure. Asia, you have a question for Chibunu, Mistress Money? Go ahead. Yeah. Thanks, Glenn. First, I would like to appreciate it. such a good project like uh, Chibunu uh, guys are working on women empowerment. That's yeah. really yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, first, I would like to know that who will be the uh, target audience for your graphic novels? I mean, kids or adults as well? You know, that's an excellent question and one that Scratch and I had talked about, right? Um it's a little dark um, because they start off, they look so cute, right? 
Um, they start off so cute and, and certainly it has that appeal for children, but I kind of wanted to keep it on that, 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 and what is that N17 rating? I think it's what it is because it does get a little dark and um, things are not what they seem. And here's our main character um, who was raised in a forest um, and has little, little contact with the outside world um, and what her elements is and what her background is. Um, so it gets a little dark um, as to what that interaction is going to look like. And um, I feel children need to keep their innocence as long as they can. Right. So you don't want you, you know, it, it's pretty much like me with Care Bears. I love the Care Bears. And then I saw Ted and he ruined Care Bears for me forever. Um, you know, um, that movie, Teddy, right? Um, so so I think staying with that that 17 rating would be appropriate. Um, we've got such a talented writer in Scratch that if she wanted to write a, a maybe a side story for just a, the, the young baby ones um, that we, we created at first and then walked them through evolution, I'm sure she might be up for something like that. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, uh, one more question. I want to know that how are you planning on preventing illegal uh, distribution of these graphic novels online? And what about copyrights? I mean, do you have copyright for these novels? That's an excellent question. Um, that's where the, the, the legalities get a little gray. And that's what we have code looking at. Because you do have to consider intellectual property because it's not just your graphic images. The graphic images prove ownership by the mint, but the words also belong to someone as well. And that intellectual property, all of this is brand new. How is that treated? It, is it gonna be treated like it is with a regular comic book? Um, and especially with avenues like audiobooks um, and subscription-based um, readings, um, how is that going to affect it, right? Well, they have the same protection as a comic book. And I assuming we would have the same protection as well. Um, the goal for the first releases, right? Um, they get, they're given for free to our holders. Um, and that's one of the things that, that um, my security guy probably won't want me to talk about, but it's a code thing that we're planning on using. Um, yeah. He's not here today, but there's a code thing that you can put um, that gives them access, kind of like a um, 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 a key. Think of it as a key that gives them access to get that copy um, that they're entitled to as an NFT holder. And of course, as the versions change to those that hold the, the rarer ones, it'll work the same way like that. Um, I didn't really get into that with him, but I know it's something that's on a priority list for him. But it's an excellent question because you get right back to it. So here it is. I'm an investor. I bought into the project. I bought into it for one, the NFT and the earnings I can gain from that. And then the book, right, which obviously is going to have some, some, some rarity to it and some value to it as well. Well, it'll mean nothing to me if the whole world can just go take it. Um, so that's an excellent question. I'm glad you asked it. And it's definitely one that's on our list of priorities. Okay, got it. And thank you. Thank you for appreciating my questions. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a great question. I'm very happy that you asked it. And by the way, anyone, any investor didn't know the link to the uh, public sale is in the main chat. So if you want to head over there and invest in the uh, Chibinu, uh, it's there for you to go straight over to. Uh, let's go to Syed. Syed, you had a question for Mistress Money at Chibinu. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, so first of all, I really want to appreciate you guys. And we need more people like you in the crypto space okay. and in, in this universe as well. So I want to know that will these uh, Chib Inu, uh, I, I mean, the, uh, the only the Chib, uh, Chib Inu holders will be able to get these NFTs or anyone can buy them? No, only they're, they're only 3,000 and then 1,500 uh, are eligible to pair um, and then 750. Um, so there only will ever be 3,750 of them. Um, so you will be able to trade them. You'll be able to sell them. Um, but um, they're open. When the mint opens up, anybody can get it. Um, I do did want at some point to talk um 
to the team about how we can open it up maybe a day before just for the community that holds the token. Um, but I don't know how we can work that out logically. Um, so, but we did talk about that as well. Maybe just um, doing a private room and anybody interested in coming into the room and letting them mint first. Um, I'm not sure yet um, if we can do that, but I, I, I'm all for rewarding the token holder to be able to buy those or get first options at the mint. Absolutely, I'm all for that. Um, in terms of anybody else um, being able to buy it, um, once it's done, once it's done, it's done. The only way they can buy it is if you sell it. Um, we've got a pool of 750 characters um, to pull from. I mean, that's what really makes it so exciting. Um, that we can continue this story. Um, because remember, the value for the zine itself, the value for the graphic novel is not only in the character of yours that you have minted that might be pulled into the storyline, but remember the backdrop, the weapons, um, all of those are going to be new things that are NFTs as they're minted um, that you would hold a copy of. So just like how Superman comic mint number one has value. Um, and if you happen to have the one that had a specific type of graphic in it, that value is so much higher. It's the approach we wanna take with the graphic novel as well. So there will be a version that can be bought of the graphic novel. Um, and those funds, again, support the project, support the token. Okay, got it. Uh, so these NFTs will be available on your own website for minting or on any other platform right. like Open. Nope, it, it will be on our own, um, our own website. And that's one of the reasons why we're three weeks out on that. Um, you know, when you're connecting your wallet, I'm a security freak. Um, when it comes to connecting your wallet, I will test it 10 ways to Sunday. Um, it's a big deal for me. Um, my daughter minted her first piece of artwork after I done bugged her a million times, did it on um, OpenSea. Um, and this chat bubble popped up. And she was like, mom, I know you said never to give it, but he said he could help me. <coughs> of course she lost rights to her artwork and she lost the funds in her wallet. So I, I have been very, very stringent on making sure that once the website is completely ready, that it has all the appropriate so security protocols. So when you connect your wallet to Mint, you will not have issues like that. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah. So will there be limit on maximum number of NFTs one wallet can have? No, none at all. Okay, got it. Got it. So one, one question. question. Yeah, yeah. So one more. If, uh, I'm sorry. One more. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So do you have any plan in future to maybe create a mini anime series uh, or a cartoon type series uh, based on your graphic novels? Are you in our team chat? So like, no, <laughs> who's in my team chat? It started with Glenn. You have to read in your mind. <laughs> Are you in our team chat? That's all I'm going to say. Um, no comment on that. That's all I'm going to say. Are you in our team chat? It's up for discussion. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> but again, Said, we, we want to make sure of what we're doing and the direction we want things to go before we make a full plan. So we do a lot of investigating and market watching and making sure that what we think is something that's feasible to, to do and produce. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a ton of research. This project didn't come about overnight. It was a ton of research. Oh my gosh, knee deep in it. Um, something as simple as her weapon. We had this discussion yesterday. Um, when you think about it, um, you have to choose the right. Because if you look at her backstory that we posted, it talked about her growing up in this very natural setting. So obviously, she can't have a very ornate jewel dagger. It it just it doesn't make sense, right? So little details like that you have to pay attention to. So here we are googling images. Um, to stay true to the character and the story that we want to tell for her. Um, if it makes sense, yeah, absolutely. But I like um, I like to go from A to A, a to B. Um, even though my team thinks I don't, they they have a, a nickname 
um, in our meetings that they they do when I start to just go, oh, well, we could do this and we could do that. You just hear somebody yell out squirrel. <laughs> That's what I do. They yell out squirrel, stay on focus. Let's let's get let's get this completed, and then we could think about branching out. But it's certainly one of the options that we've looked at. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, um, Venice, you had a question for Mistress Monia Jibini. Go ahead. Uh, okay, thank you so much. Uh, actually, uh, you have uh, mentioned on your white paper uh, that you will not spend communities' money on uh, Coin Gecko Rush listing or CMC fast tracking. Uh, does it mean you are not going to use these platforms to promote your project? Uh, if yes, then uh, how will you uh, approach uh, potential big investors who uh, totally rely on CMC or Coin Gecko listings? Uh, I think uh, you will have to work harder if you don't use these platforms. Oh, it's not that we didn't plan on using these platforms. Do you understand that people pay someone ten to fifteen thousand dollars of their marketing wallet to get on these platforms? That might give you a pump, but they always dump. But here's the thing, you do understand that there's an application process to that, that the application is free, that they're actually breaking the law by doing that because no one has the right to collect those funds to apply for a free application. You do understand that process, right? Um, my team is about full transparency in everything we do. And if we're sitting on 15K, you better believe um, you know, we'll be marketing the hell out of it. I want to get in the Asian market. I think we can do very well. Do you know what it costs to, to advertise in the Asian market? It's 5K a week. I'm sitting on 15K. Buddy, I will be all over Weibo. I will be all over Weibo. You turn around and you'll find you'll find Chiba Inu. Um, yeah, I, I'm in no hurry to be on, on CMC um, by utilizing 15,000 of our marketing funds. I have 15,000 in our marketing wallet. I'm all over the Asian market. You turn around and you're gonna see my character there. That's where I want people to be able to invest. Oh, okay, uh, I understand now. Thank you so much for creating. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Good question, good question. Um, crypto Legend, you had a question. Wait a minute, I've just got to find out there. Crypto Legend, you had a question for Mistress Money? Quick question. A case of newbies. Do you have um videos related to your projects on the blockchain technology guidelines? And how friendly is your platform to the new users? Uh, wow, that really broke up for me. Glenn, did you get any of that? No. Um he <clears throat> comes in under different names. Uh, I don't know if he's a teenager and yeah, ask questions, but uh, he's enthusiastic. That's fair enough. Um, HB, you had a question for Mr. Shmoney. Uh, Chibinu, go ahead. Hi. Um, hi, Mr. Shmoney. Hello. Very, uh, an excellent, excellent discussion there. I think you've covered pretty much everything we need to know about this project i loved your enthusiasm oh, i i apologize <laughs> for interrupting you i'm so sorry um codex is actually on um and he wasn't muted that's our security guy that can answer those questions um regarding um the security and safety and and then the blockchain stuff um i'm oh, sorry for interrupting you know, i have a question yeah. yeah i can find codex while we answer that question, yeah. Okay, um, I, I just want to know, can I can I go ahead? Yes, please. Yes, please. My apologies for interrupting. Yes, please. No, nah, it's all good. I mean, uh, I wouldn't even say that I have a, a question per se. I mean, you've covered quite a lot about this project, and I'm still busy in doing my research on this project. And I think I just want to... I think you deserve a pat at the back. I mean, you've you've done quite well. Uh, I think there, there are quite a few AMAs I've been so bullish on. And I think this one is, is a real deal, really. It's a big deal. And um, I think quite everyone here that follows the AMA, I mean, that can reason with the way you have spoken, 
should be convinced that this is a big deal. And this is something you should really look into. I mean, you've covered quite a lot of things and I don't really have much question, but to really support your work. And uh, I mean, this is the very first time actually I'll I, I see uh, uh, a mistress coming to defend <laughs> a project so well. I mean, <laughs> and it's quite impressive. It's quite impressive, really. Yeah. And um, I look forward to the success of your project. And uh, I wish you well, you and your team. I know you've got quite a lot of things going on there in that team. And uh, it seems some, so, <laughs> as you can see, some of the uh, participants are following through and probably trying to really even quite deep into what the team has discussed and which you are not really to reveal to us at time. We look forward to seeing what you have for us. And um, I'm pretty bullish and I, 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 I wish you the best in this. Thank you. I definitely appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Code, if you were sitting in the, the chat the whole time, I know we only have like a few minutes left. Did you want to answer any of those questions that was asked? I can't I can't see where he is. Uh, if he raises his hand, I can unmute him. He'll come to the top of the... I've been squiggling through. There's 300 people to find. Oh, my free. God, yes. Yeah, um, yeah. You can hear us if you could raise your hand. Oh, my mm. gosh, it's so late for him. Let's see if I can if I get him. While you're doing that, I would just like to tell everybody we dropped some visual storyboards on your page for them to follow along with all the links for any questions they may have. Awesome. And I, I did have the video, but I think um, I crashed Telegram in trying to, to send it from my iPad. Um, I tried to I tried to compress it and keep it under two minutes, but I think because I saved it as uh, ultra high definition, it's still halfway sending. Uh, but um, I'll be happy to answer any other questions you guys have. Um, you know, definitely join our community. Um, I love the guys here at Will Coin Talk. It's honest and pure feedback. Um, I do a lot of, I call it my lazy man investing um, because I know Glenn does, yeah, I know Glenn does um, a huge amount of research before um, doing any AMAs um, and, and feel really, really privileged that, you know, given that I didn't do an active marketing, didn't have a huge telegram that he did his research, um, took a look at the project and gave us an opportunity to share it with you guys. It's money. Yeah. It's uh, professional and, and the right way to do it uh, for all projects. And I, I can't find yeah him in the chat, but, uh, <clears throat> we say anyone has got any questions, we can get you safely over to the Chibi Renu Telegram. And in our main chat, there's a link there for the public sale, so anyone can get involved. We only need to get up to 40 BNB hard cap, and then will you be launching in the next 24 hours, Mr. Money? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have a launch time set. As long as we hit soft cap, we'll definitely be launching. I believe it's 4 p.m. UTC to 22.22. Um, yeah, so that's great for our investors. Um, it's beautiful artwork. It's, um, you know, the graphic novel, the NFTs, and um, me and Rudy want a, a game in the future, maybe, uh, yeah, chat rooms and things for anime fans, and that'd be awesome. So I'm looking forward to the future for Mistress Money and the team. And, uh, yeah, she's been a long-term uh, community member here, and we always support uh, Mistress Money. And, uh, yeah, it's fabulous that we could have another AMA tonight, and I look forward to... Uh, the future for Chibinu and the graphic novel. And you can keep us all updated in the main chat for our investors. And uh, thank you very much for coming, Mistress Money. It's been great. Definitely my pleasure, Glenn, for being back here again. And um, so we had some issues with the whitelist. And so we just did the public pre-sale, but I did um, tell EXO that I was going to offer two Freeman passes um, to people in the audience. Um, so you can always um, just DM me their wallet addresses. And I will honor that. Yeah. Well, we, we, I think we've got spin the wheel now as well. So we've got two spins for $50. We can maybe do four spins and do the um, uh, the NFT mint um, for two lucky investors. That'd be great. Yeah. 